Oh, Canada. Edmonton and Toronto are now the likely NHL hub cities. I'm Clay Emo. I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter. I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram. I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club. This is my Canucks take all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Wednesday, July the 1st. This is where you get Canucks insight that's positive and timely. Happy Canada Day. For those of us that live in Canada, we know that we are blessed. We are thankful to live in such a beautiful country, peaceful for the most part, um, not as much political unrest as other countries. And uh, yeah, I, I know that I'm very grateful to live in such a beautiful place. And for those of you watching that don't live in Canada, you should move here. Now, I am wearing my 2014 Olympic Winter Games hockey jersey. Men's and women's teams wore a jersey like this. It's kind of big on me, so I have to hold it up so you can see the Canadian flag and the word Canada. You can see that. Uh, but yeah, I enjoy wearing this. I'm not sure I can wear it all day, though. My family might look at me kind of funny as we're trying to eat lunch, but we will see. But obviously, I'm very proud to, to, to bear the maple leaf and to say that I am Canadian, born and raised all 46 years of my good-looking life. And um, one programming note, unfortunately, I was not, I'm not able to interview my cousin Dusty today for my next Zoom chat. Unfortunately, something came up for him and his family. Everything's good, but he just uh, couldn't make it work today. So thank you um, to everyone who submitted questions. I'll save those for the time that I am able to, to talk to Dusty, hopefully soon. Uh, we will look at rescheduling that chat pretty darn quick. So thanks again, and uh, we'll, good things come to those who wait. And we will um, uh, we'll get to that interview soon. Speaking of waiting, today is usually, July 1st, is usually free agent frenzy. We're usually glued to our TV, watching TSN, watching Sportsnet, glued to Twitter, refreshing constantly to see the latest rumors and, and deals. But none of that this year because the NHL won't have their free agency period, free agent period until the end of the regular season. So it could be the end of September, it could be the end of October by the time we get to a true free agency. And then we can do all that crazy stuff then. And it's usually a big day for the Vancouver Canucks, and it will be this year because there's 10 guys they got to look at, UFAs and RFAs, got to make decisions on. The UFAs of Markstrom, Toffoli, Tanev, Fantenberg, and Levo. The RFAs, who I spoke about yesterday, Vertanen, Stetcher, and then there's uh, Adam Gaudet, there's Zach McEwen, and then I'm missing one as I, as I list all these guys out. Oh, Tyler Mott. So at least there's 10 guys, five UFAs, five RFAs, that the Canucks will indeed have to make decisions on. So that'll be fascinating to watch. And of course, we think of good and bad free agent signings on July 1st. In the past, you, the good, you'd say guys like Dan Hamhuis, Manny Malhotra. You know, those are some, some really good signings back in the day. Of course, some not so, uh, not so good signings recently, or not so recently, including Marc Messier, including, um, I'd say, Jay Beagle, and, and of course, Louis Erickson. So... Um, always an exciting day. Actually, when you list those out, I think betting strength is more in his drafting and in the last two years in his trades, right? Getting guys like JT Miller, Tyre Toffoli, uh, Josh Levo, and Tanner Pearson all in trades. Those are four guys in our top nine that he's brought over through trades. And, uh, you know, so I'd say his trading and his drafting is better than his, his, his free agent signing now that I think about it. And his contract negotiation is not bad. You know, it'll be put to the test when it comes to, uh, you know, Mark Schwinn Toffoli this year. He did well with uh, Besser last year, with Horvat a few years ago, and then he'll have to do Pedersen and Hughes next year. Uh, so uh, always interesting, always something going on with the Vancouver Canucks. But I want to expand my talk today, past the Vancouver Canucks. Bob McKenzie tweeted out earlier today, and it's been confirmed by a few sources, um, that Edmonton and Toronto, two Canadian teams, will be named as the NHL hub cities very soon. Now, the big caveat, and I fall into this, is um, this is rumored, this is likely, but it's not for certain. And I was, I admit that I, I talked about Vegas as a certainty about a month ago because I heard it from two or three good sources, but we can, we've obviously th uh, seen that things can change. Ditto for the Vancouver Canucks about a week and a half ago. Uh, some very prominent people were saying that Vancouver was a lock. And it basically was until... Uh, you know, the the little uh, snag, as they say. That snag turned into a big rip. And in, in essence, um, I couldn't agree the NHL and provincial health officer, Dr. Barty Henry, on, on protocol when, when someone from a team tested positive. And as I've said over the past week and a half, I am fine with that decision if it keeps BC safe and it keeps their numbers really low. So uh, Edmonton and Toronto, for a variety of reasons, sounds like they are indeed the front runners. Um, they, they probably have agreed to whatever, obviously, they've agreed to whatever the NHL has desired. They've set up kind of a, 
kind of a wall, basically a bubble wall, um, Edmonton, including hotels, restaurants that are pretty close to their Rogers Place, and then Toronto using the, I believe the CNE uh, grounds close to their arena, as well as maybe a, a second hotel, um, and then uh, everything from their own restaurants to their own amenities to their own leisure activities, whatever it may be. Um, I, I'm sure that the NHL and the two cities are working on that uh, very hard right now because they got to announce it soon. Training camps are opening in July 10 in, in the team's respective home cities, but then by July 22, they need to be in their hub cities to get ready for a, a start for the end of this month. So um, I expect an announcement in the next couple of days it, it, because even if you say they're going to announce it officially by Friday, um, that gives, uh, yeah, basically July 3, it gives the team's three weeks to figure out how to get to Toronto or Edmonton. Some other positives to doing it in Canada, and I would have said this if Vancouver had it as well, the Canadian dollar right now uh, hovering around 74 uh, US uh, cents. Um, so obviously a big cost savings by by almost 25%, by 26% there. I don't think that math is, I don't think you just go 100 to subtract 74, do you? Anyways, it's, it's a good savings. 74 cents on the dollar uh, compared to the US dollar. And uh, obviously, um, there's there's Edmonton has had some pretty good numbers Toronto not so good but they've got it more under control and obviously the most important thing is the NHL feels that they can really control um, the you know the bubble in both of those cities and it sounds like the West will indeed play in Edmonton and the East will indeed play in Toronto there's some thought about doing crossover so you're not playing in your home city but you know you take out the fans how much host home ice advantage is there maybe a tiny bit with the boards the glass the stanchions the ice but I don't think it's enough to uh, um, those benefits don't outweigh the benefits of having a home team not have to travel somewhere else. And geographically, all the teams uh, from the West being there, like it makes sense that like Calgary, Edmonton, Vancouver, um, they all, Vegas, they all go to Edmonton as opposed to all the way to Toronto. And of course, even more so for Toronto, uh, being in the East, so many of the, of the, you know, obviously Toronto, Montreal, and then all the Northeastern teams uh, in even the central teams in, in the U.S. Uh, making making sure that they go over to the East makes sense. Not central division, centrally located teams. So a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of factors go into this and that's why it's so complicated. That's why we've seen it flip, right? Uh, a week and a half ago, you could have argued that it was Vegas and Vancouver and now a complete about face Toronto and Edmonton. I quickly talked about Vancouver's scenario, why that broke down. With Vegas, it sounds like, um, you know, they're like many places in the States, their COVID numbers are spiking once again and including those in the in the close by nearby vicinity uh, casinos and hotels of where of where uh, Vegas would have hosted all the NHL staff so simply not safe enough and in Toronto they they provide two of the not the two safest because you'd include Vancouver but two of the safest environments Canadian dollar um, uh, a nice west and east setup so you don't have the whole Vancouver and Vegas together. So everything makes sense. I'm not bitter. I, I'm happy. Actually, they're in Canada. I'm happy for the Canadian hockey scene and not just because it's Canada Day. And I'm, I'm most importantly, I can't wait for NHL hockey to get playing again as long as it's safe to do so. So there we go, Canucks fans and hockey fans. On Canada Day, the rumor comes out that it looks like it's Toronto and Edmonton as the hub cities. But again, this is just a report. I'm not going to say it's confirmed until it's confirmed. I've learned my lesson, but um, still an interesting talking piece for sure. So Canucks fans and hockey fans, question of the day on Canada Day is, how would you feel about uh, Toronto and Edmonton being the two hub cities? Do you think they're a good choice? Do you think it's a well-thought-out choice? Are you jealous at all? Are you hurt at all? Or are you fine with the way this is going? Leave a comment below. I love to read, react, reply. As always, subscribe if you like to. Like this video if you like to. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Enjoy this day. Once again, happy Canada Day. Have a great day. God bless. And go Canucks go.